Welcome to the Diction Police Special Diction Unit. This video and the accompanying translation and phonetic guide are a production of Singing Diction GBR. Widmung is the first selection in Robert Schumann's song cycle, Myrten, Op. 25. The cycle uses texts from many poets. This song has a text by Friedrich Rückert. One thing to note is the pronunciation of the title. The D is not voiced, so it's not Widmung, but Widmung. The song cycle is Gewidmet, <laughs> dedicated to his wife, Clara Wieck Schumann. Widmung Du meine Seele, du mein Herz, du meine Wonn, o oh, du mein Schmerz, Du meine Welt, in der ich lebe, mein Himmel, du, darein ich schwebe. O du mein Grab, in das hinab ich ewig meinen Kummer gab. Du bist die Ruh, du bist der Frieden. Du bist vom Himmel mir beschieden. Dass du mich liebst, macht mich mir wert. Dein Blick hat mich vor mir verklärt. Du hebst mich liebend über mich. Mein guter Geist, mein besseres Ich. One of the most important aspects of German diction is the difference between long and short vowels in the language. Yes, because rather often there is a change of the meaning if you don't pronounce it precisely. If you're saying a long vowel instead of a short vowel, which also corresponds to a closed vowel instead of a yeah, instead of a, oh, an open vowel. You, you actually change the entire meaning of the word. Yes, yes. So it's always important to make sure to have the right vowel. And here we have some comparisons of closed and opened vowels. For example, in the second verse, Du meine Wonn, o oh, du mein Schmerz. So Wonn, as though we read the O. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's an open, short very short O sound, O, von, followed by a glottal mm -hmm. to make sure we have one word only with one letter. It's O, O, completely closed. Exactly, closed and very long. Yes. And the problem is that if you see these back to back, sometimes people try to harmonize them. They try to make them sound very similar. But if you say von instead of von, you're saying a completely different word. You're saying that's that's right. Wohnen to live. Yeah. Von yeah. means bliss or delight. Yeah. Du meine Seele, du mein Herz. Make sure that the du is always a very long and closed vowel. Du meine Seele, du mein Herz. So there we have the Seele, which is long because there's two e's. Yeah. Right. And again, just like the o, it's the e is also extremely closed sound. Yeah. Du meine Seele, du mein Herz. And that one is the open version. It's Herz, eh. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's followed by two consonants. In general, that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for either, for the long version, for, for a long vowel, we're looking for either two vowels back to back, this, or two of the same mm -hmm. vowel back to back, like we see in Seele, or we're looking for a vowel that ends the syllable, like du or, and, and o. Yep. Or we're looking for a word that only, in the stem of the word, only has one consonant, like... Liebe. Or even some of the later ones... Grab. Gab. Yeah. So even though this is an A vowel and we can't change it to open or closed, we still can make it long and short. Yeah. Because grab and gab are long, but they rhyme with... Hinab. Which is short. Yeah. And that one, there's no rule for that. We just have to know that that's short. Yeah. We also have the open I and the closed lowercase I back to back in the middle of this text. Yeah. Du bist die Ruhe. So, du, of course, it's like at the, at the beginning, it's uh, long and, and closed. But bist is, there are two consonants mm -hmm. uh, after the, the vowel. So, it's a short vowel. Mm -hmm. Du bist die Ruhe. And now we have this, this special connection between the T and the D, which we combine to one sound. We have a small break before a T sound. Du bist 
diru. So we don't have to pronounce both of them. We don't need bist diru. So we don't have to release that T. We just want to hold, we want to actually stop it almost like we do in Italian. Yeah. For a double exactly. consonant. Exactly. Du bist diru. And we hear the, the difference between bi, bist diru. So the D is again a long and closed vowel. Exactly. And ru, of course, again. <laughs> exactly. And I think the danger there is that the lips want to have be, be slightly tense. So we don't want to really make an oo sound. We sort of want to go mm -hmm. uh, or uh, something maybe not as round as we need. We really need a nice, loose, rounded lip. Yes, completely. Du bist die ru. Since we've discussed this closed oo sound, what is the open u sound like? We have it before. In the, in the word kuma, u, the double M makes the, the vowel open and short. So it's kuma, u, uma, kuma. In contrast to du bist die ru, kuma, u. Now, I said that when a word ends with one consonant, then we end up with a long vowel often. But we have a few exceptions to this, and one of them is just exceptional. Wert. And just to compare this closed sound, we have the at the very beginning, we've already talked about the word Herz. And we hear how much shorter and how much more open that sound is. Yeah, like like in Schmerz yeah. uh, also. Herz, Schmerz, Wert. Wert. This one is like a long closed E sound. Yes. And there's Although... no, there's no re rhyme or reason. There are two consonants after it, so it should be short, but is not. Yeah. But oddly enough, it rhymes with Verklärt. This one is special because it's the A umlaut. So the A umlaut is always an open epsilon, E. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's still long, Y. In the word verklärt, after the, the A umlaut, we have two consonants, that's right. But in the, in the root of the word, in the infinitive, it's verklären. Okay. So there's only the R after the A umlaut. And uh, that is why it still is a is a long vowel. So even when we conjugate it, because just because there are two consonants, we still want to maintain the original root of the word. Yes. So it's still long. Unfortunately, it's not not too easy. <laughs> exactly, but <laughs> but we have heapst. So it's another example of the same situation here. Yeah, this the infinitive is heben, and that's why we have a long vowel here. Heapst, and we have the Auslautverhärtung. So it's not a real soft B sound, but it's a real P sound. So we have to hold the tension in the in the lips. Heapst. It's not that that it's really explosive at that point because it's within the word. Mm -hmm. Heapst. Exactly. So it's not heapst. We don't want a voicing to go through it. Heapst. Yeah. We also see this Auslautverhärtung, this hardening of the final consonant, in words that we've already talked about. Yeah, it's in grab, hinab, gab. Exactly. Yeah. And there are a few other ones here, too. Liebst. Which, just so. like heapst, is in the middle of the word. Right. And just to compare that, we have... Liebend. There we have the schwa after the, the B. Mm -hmm. That's why we have Liebe. So then the B stays as a B, stays yes, voiced. stays voiced. But in the end, the D, again, is because of this Auslautverhärtung. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a T sound, Liebend. Exactly. Diphthongs in German are slightly different from diphthongs in English, although they seem very similar. They look very similar to ours, I think. And we get many of our words with diphthongs, like mine. Yeah. We in American, of course, I would say mine. Yeah. And you would say? Du meine Seele. Meine Seele. Du mein Herz. So it is similar. It's the, the, what's different about it is the off-glide. The primary vowel is basically the same. Even in English, we say a bright A ah vowel for mine. Mm -hmm. And you would say a bright A ah vowel too. Yeah. But mine. our off-glide would be an open capital I, mine. And you would say... Mine. So it's the closed lowercase E. That's it. That's what it is. Often it's a question of timing. I've heard that in many different ways, that some singers try to to make both sounds, uh, to give them the same time. That is not right. The first vowel needs much more time than the last one. The last one is only the end of this sound. Du meine Seele, it's meine Seele. And if it's my, meine, that's 
for me as a native speaker, I, I feel there's something wrong. Yeah, it sort of tightens up too much. Yeah. The feeling of it gets very tense. Yeah. So, du meine Seele, du mein Herz, du meine Wonne, oh du mein Schmerz. It's like a vocalise for that. <laughs> uh, pretty much, exactly. Yes. And it's, we have a few other ones, a few other words with it besides mein, although we say mein. Mein Himmel, du, da rein ich schwebe. What I find interesting about this word da rein is it brings up a tiny little point in German diction that even a single R between two vowels can be rolled. We don't need to flip the R, right? We don't need to say da rein. We can say da rein. And it's totally understandable. Yes, yes, perhaps it's even better. Yeah, yeah exactly. In this case, it's a word that is not very common, though, of course, we use it from time to time, but to to make sure that you get the, the word and everyone in, in the audience, it's good to do a bit more. So, da rein ich schwebe. Yeah. Ich schwebe brings up a difficult cluster of consonants together. We have this... Ich laut, the Cicidia. We have the Cicidia and then this long squiggly S sound. Exactly. Um, and uh, though and they are near to each other, we, we have to make sure there is a difference. Right, because we can't just say Ich schwebe. We can't, we can't run them together. It's not the same sound. No, no. It's Ich schwebe. So the, the Ich, this, this Cicidia is very far in the front. Yeah. And even in, in this case, you can feel how the... The uh, long squiggly S sound is further in the back. Ich schwebe. No, on no, not really in the back. It's yeah. It's just in ich a different. Sli- it's in a diff- slightly different position. Yeah, it's near near to the near to the CCD, but or let's say it's really next to the CCD sound. Yeah. Ich schwebe. Yeah, but we definitely need both sounds to come out. Yeah. And don't be afraid of getting this ich really far in the front of the mouth because it's it shouldn't be up on the hard palate it should be right behind the teeth right it should be we should feel the air hitting right behind the teeth and not it's right behind the, the teeth right behind the the upper teeth yeah and the, the long squiggly s sound afterwards is further in in the in the back behind the um, the, the the tongue is a little bit lower right yes ich schwebe so this is further down yeah I, yeah Hard to explain, but I think in this in this song it's very important to make sure about the the Cicidia sound because the last word is ich, mein besseres ich, my better me, exactly <laughs> my, my, my better, better self. self, my better self, um, and we really need this sound to end the song and the poem, mein besseres ich. So it's a long sound. Yeah. The long closed U sound can be problematic for several reasons. Sometimes we don't want to move our lips into a rounded enough position, or in trying to round our lips, we end up creating tension in the corners of our lips, which alters the vowel. One of the simplest ways to find the pure closed Ooh vowel is to think of an owl. Who, who. Somehow, not equating this sound to language and using an imitation of an animal helps people find the right placement to keep this vowel relaxed and pure. Du, ru, guta. We said that the letter R can be rolled in the word da rein, even though it's intervocalic. It's always important to keep our language rules straight when we're trying to sing in multiple languages all the time. And since most of us have learned Italian first, we get it beaten into our head that a single R between two vowels is just a flip. But that's a rule in Italian. In German, we have license to roll an intervocalic R just as much as we would the ones after another consonant, like Grab, Frieden, and Besseres, or at the beginning of a word like Ru. The question mark comes when we have an R at the end of a word or before another consonant. In these situations, we tend to replace the R with an upside down bright A, especially when it's after a closed vowel, as in der, mir, wert, and for. 
This upside down bright a ah can also replace the combination er at the end of a word, as in kuma, uba, and guta. We do have the option of rolling the r, although it can sound slightly old fashioned and may draw attention to the weak syllable. If you choose to roll the r for vocal reasons, then the transcription will become schwa r, kumar, ubar. Often, after an open vowel, a rolled R feels good, as in Herz, Schmerz. And we have both options in Verklärt. The prefix VER is transcribed with an open epsilon E and the upside down A. And we've transcribed the next R, the one after the A umlaut, as rolled, but both of these R's could either be rolled or reduced to this upside down A vowel. Verklärt verklärt or verklärt. You'll hear all three versions in recordings of different German singers, and all of them would be acceptable and understandable. So this becomes a matter of what sings most easily for you. One thing we do not use in German lyric diction is the guttural uvular rolled R which I can't even pronounce. Even though some French singers have started using the uvular R in their own language, in their own lyric diction, German singers do not sing with the uvular R, but rather with what they call the Zungen R, the regular Italian rolled R. Du meine Seele, du mein Herz. Du meine Wonn, o oh, du mein Schmerz. Du meine Welt, in der ich lebe. Mein Himmel, du, darein ich schwebe. O oh, du mein Grab, in das hinab ich ewig meinen Kummer gab. Du bist die Ruh, du bist der Frieden, du bist vom Himmel mir beschieden. Dass du mich liebst, macht mich mir wert. Dein Blick hat mich vor mir verklärt. Du hebst mich liebend über mich, mein guter Geist. Mein besseres Ich. This interview with Mirko Roschkowski was conducted by Ellen Rissinger. Phonetic transcription by Ellen Rissinger and François Germain. This has been the Diction Police Special Diction Unit, a production of Singing Diction GBR.